Hello, my name is Anubhav and I'm part of technical marketing team at Cisco working for security business unit. This is a short video on firepower threat defense insertion in ACI. I'll start off this video with ACI introduction where I will give you high level overview of ACI and all the components involved in ACI fabric. Then I will talk about security insertion in ACI where I will cover firepower threat defense insertion into ACI. We'll also talk about deployment models and how we can insert FTD in ACI using a unmanaged service graph. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a live demo and I will showcase how to insert virtual FTD into ACI fabric. ACI introduction. So ACI stands for application centric infrastructure. It is Cisco's uh, bet on software defined networking. We have uh, ACI support on high end next generation data center switches like Nexus 9K. These switches uh, are capable of running on 1 gig, 10 gig, 40 gig uh, ports and in future we, we will support 100 gig ports as well. In ACI Fabric everything is controlled by APIC controller, application policy infrastructure controller. It will, it will, it, it can orchestrate networking as well as L4 to L7 services. So when I say orchestrate L4 to L7 services, you can also uh, insert firewalls, next generation IPS, routers, load balancer within the traffic path. APIC can now integrate with multiple hypervisors like KVM, VMware, and Hyper-V. In ACI Fabric, you can run mix and match of workloads. You can have physical as well as virtual workloads. And everything is controlled by APIC controller in the background. So you don't have to worry about keeping the keeping uh, long Excel sheets for VLAN assignment. So VLAN assignment is automatically done in the background by APIC controller itself. It embraces open system, which means we have northbound APIs that you can use and you can integrate this system with any third party or any system that is capable of using APIs. A ACI Fabric is an abstracted model where we have collection of uh, endpoints based on the endpoint groups. So you can group your endpoints using IP address, subnet, VM attributes, and there are all, there, there is a list of things on which you can group endpoints. And when you group your endpoints in endpoint group, you can apply policy on the on 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 EPG level. For applying policy, you need to write a contract. So if you want to enable traffic between two EPGs, you you need to create a, a contract. So contract is just a whitelist filter. You can specify what is to be allowed or what is to be denied. But in case if you're looking for more in-depth in analysis of traffic, you can always forward the traffic to firewall or to next generation firewall or to IPS, next generation IPS, or you can even send it to router or load balance balancer. For inserting L4 to L7 services, you need to create something known as service chain. So this is a good uh, slide. In ACI fabric, we have spine switches and we have leaf switches. These switches are interconnected to each other using multiple links. So we have multipathing because all leaves are connected to all spine switches. And on right hand side, we have APIC controller, which controls the entire ACI fabric. And on the extreme left, we have L3 out EPG. L3 out EPG is, uh, is a concept if you want to connect your ACI fabric to external world you create a L3 out configuration and if you look at uh, this slide again we have two EPGs first EPG is user EPG other EPG is file EPG and in case you want to enable 
communication between these two EPGs, you need to write a contract. Under contract, you will define what, what traffic is allowed and what is not. In addition to this, you can connect your L4 to L7 devices anywhere in the network and forward and create a service graph and forward your traffic to that L3 to, uh, L4 to L7 devices. So you don't have to do any kind of sp uh, special traffic engineering. Everything is done by APIC controller. So you can have a mix of uh, L4 to L7 devices. You can have physical as well as virtual devices. And there is uh, application virtu uh, as AVS as well application virtual switch it is a virtual leaf uh, that brings the functionality of ACI fabric down to hypervisor level firepower thread defense in ACI so we do have uh, two flavors of firepower thread defense in ACI we have virtual FTD which is presently supported on VMware and it is managed by firepower management center FMC and on the physical side we have uh, firepower 4100 and 9300 on which you can run firepower thread defense image again in case of physical also it is managed by FMC so uh, we have uh, for firewall functionality we have ASA and uh, with acquisition of uh, source fire we brought in firepower services so we for for next generation ips and next generation firewall we have uh, firepower uh, services available and uh, we now have a unified image we took a couple of features from asa like tcp normalization nat acl dynamic routing protocol failover function and complete feature set from NGFW and NGIPS. So um, we are now working on bringing more and more features from ASA in upcoming release. And this is um, more information on security, advanced security in ACI. We can stitch ASA both physical and virtual. You can always forward your traffic to SFR or source fire uh, module. You can also integrate virtual firepower and physical firepower and now we can also stitch FTD physical and FTD virtual using unmanaged service graph and everything is controlled by APIC controller you need to just register these devices on APIC controller and APIC controller will stitch and bring these devices in data plane except FTD because for FTD we do not have a device package at the moment so we can configure it as unmanaged device which means we need to configure device in advance everything like interface configuration policies threat policies failover everything should be configured and once that configuration is done we can always stitch uh, FTD using an unmanaged service graph so APIC will have no control over the con configuration of FTD. APIC controller can only notify leaves to redirect traffic to FTD and FTD is, uh, is managing traffic directly from the CLI or, or from, from uh, the firepower management center. So this is a very good uh, slide where you have uh, information about supported platform, what are the L4 to L7 insertion mode, if HA mode is supported or not. So this you can uh, you can view this um, slide for your future reference. I'm not going through all this all the points one by one. So I'll move on to the next slide. So we uh, have three models presently. First model is when you have ASA and firepower physical appliances or mix and match of physical and virtual. So you first redirect your traffic to ASA and then stitch and then send it to Firepower for next generation firewall and IPS functionality. So this is done by adding, adding a service graph and adding two devices uh, in a single service graph. 
Second model is you have ASA, physical ASA, and on top of that you have firepower services running. So you can forward your traffic to ASA and internally on ASA you can forward it to firepower services and then bring it back to ASA and then send it to destination if traffic is allowed. Third model is a model of unified image where we have features from ASA and full functionality from firepower. So you can always stitch firepower thread defense directly. So it gives us flexibility of using single appliance, single image and single management console. So you can, cons you can uh, configure everything from FMC. Inserting FTD using unmanaged service graph. So presently we have uh, route in mode or go to mode uh, available. In this mode your FTD will act as a router. It will act as a default gateway for the devices and it can forward traffic to the other side. We also have transparent mode or go through mode in which uh, it will act as a as a bridge between two EPGs and in order to enable this kind of uh, configuration you need to make sure that in EPGs flooding is enabled because by default in ACI fabric flooding is disabled so if you want to make transparent mode work you need to go there and enable flooding presently this diagram is showing only one subnet in EPGs but we also have uh, for routed mode, there is, a, there is a concept of adding multiple subnets in a single EPG. So this is a very good slide which explains about next generation firewall protection at parameter. So in this case, what we have done is we have campus network VLAN 100 and we are, we are planning to stitch or we, we have stitched of FTD running on 4100 or 9300 uh, between the campus network and web EPG. So in this particular situation we have uh, FMC which manages FTD. So we have configured everything from FMC. We have uh, the moment we configure everything we create a port channel on on the uh, because this FTD is connect dual attached to leaves and there is a VPC on the leaf side so in this case we need to configure um, sub interface like in this figure we have created VLAN 300 or port channel 1.300 and port channel 1.301 300 is a consumer interface the other one is a provider interface and the moment I will stitch um, FTD using APIC controller, APIC controller will notify, will, will talk to LEAF and notify the notif and, conf and notify LEAF to stitch VLAN 100 with VLAN 300 and VLAN 301 to VLAN 200 so that any traffic coming from VLAN 100 it is, all, it is automatically forwarded to VLAN 300 and then it will reach consumer interface of FTD and from FTD it is sent back to provider interface and from there it will go to web EPG. In this situation EPIC controller is just stitching VLANs and forwarding traffic to physical device. All configuration has to be done from FMC. You cannot control anything from EPIC controller. Reason is there is no device package available at the moment. This is again a similar kind of setup. Instead of uh, campus network, we have app EPG talking to DB EPG. So traffic flow is same. Same kind of uh, VLAN uh, stitching is uh, done in this case also. Now. This is a uh, this is little bit of little bit different because this is um, more of a virtual device insertion. So, in virtual device, instead of creating a port channel, we have VNIC. One VNIC is used as consumer uh, VNIC. The other one is used as provider VNIC. So, uh, the moment we configure or add 
virtual FTD in APIC controller, APIC controller will automatically create a create a port group and that port group is assigned to VNIC. So when you add a device in APIC controller, you need to define interfaces which VNIC is going to be consumer interface and which VNIC is going to be pro provider interface and accordingly new port group is assigned to these VNICs. Traffic flow is exactly same. APIC will notify leaves to stitch VLAN 100 with 300 and 301 with 200. This is a topology that I have taken from one of our labs. Uh, we are planning to bring this lab up in gold, so in future you can always look at it. So L3 out topology is something which is required when you're connecting your A ACI fabric with external world. In this situation on left hand side we have outside host and default gateway for outside host is ASAV5. So this is outside of the uh, ACI fabric. So in order to connect our fabric with outside world, we create VRFs, ACI fabric VRF nets on ACI fabric and enable some kind of routing protocol between these two devices. So in this case, we have routing going between LEAF and ASA V5 and then we have ASA cluster running. So on ASA we have outside interface and inside interface and similarly for inside as well. So between web host we have leaf and there is a routing neighborship going on between leaf and the leaf, uh, leaf 1 and leaf 2. So in case of uh, word ASA cluster we can always stitch FTD as well in routed mode. 